The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkah, one of the priests at Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to him in the 13th year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, and through the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, down to the fifth month of the 11th year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Amen. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm too young. You must go to everyone I send you to. And whatever I command you, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I've put my words in your mouth. He says, see, today I point you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down to destroy and overthrow to build and to plant. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? I see the branch of an almond tree, I replied. The Lord said to me, you have seen correctly, for I'm watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Let me say that again. For I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. Amen. Minister Andrew, we'll say amen together. The word of the Lord came to me again. What do you see? I see a pot that is boiling, I answered. It's tilted toward us from the north. The Lord said to me, from the north, disaster we poured out on all who live in the land. I'm about to summon all the peoples of the northern kingdoms, the declares the Lord. Their kings will come and set up their thrones in the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem. They will come against all the her surrounding walls and against all the towns of Judah. I'll pronounce my judgment on my people because of their wickedness in forsaking me, in burning incense to other gods and in worshiping with what their hands have made. Then verse 17 says, get yourself ready, stand up and say to them, whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. Verse 18, today, today, I have made you a fortified city, amen, an iron pillar and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests and the people of the land. They will fight against you but will not overcome you for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Oh, amen the words of the Lord, so comforting. And we thank God that we've come to the end, but with the, if, like I said, we've been praying, but today we're going to concentrate. And the first thing that um, we want to pray about is verse 2. It says, the word of the Lord came to him, and verse 4 starts by saying, the word of the Lord came to me, as in um, Jeremiah started talking about it. And today we're going to pray about revelation. It's very important. We have gone over it. Please see the book, um, visit the bookshop, see these DVDs are available. So we did speak about all that, about the word of the Lord coming to, to um, the, the description that came to him, Jeremiah, and he saying, owning it, that, that it came to him. It's very important that we have revelation, and we're going to pray into it. What Jeremiah experienced was revelation. In essence, God came to him. He himself did not call God. But remember, you know that God has chosen you and I. And so he sets us apart. Amen. And from the very foundation, we spoke about that. The fact that God's hand is upon us, he will come to you. Amen. The difference, this, this is the challenge with God coming to us, is that if God comes to us, the onus is on us to do something with his coming. Amen. I hope you're, you're with me. And so number one we're going, to talk, we're going to pray about is revelation. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18, it says, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. So when you don't have revelation, you have a problem. But God from the beginning, again, I read um, 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10 says this, but you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Then he continues, once you were not a people, but now you are a people of God. I like that. Once you were not people, he should have said, but now you are a people. But actually, he qualifies it and says, but now you are a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. I'm connecting it to the fact that God has called us. And he calls us because we're special. Say to your neighbor, you're special. And say to yourself, I am special. He calls you and I because we're chosen of him. 
Remember last week we spoke about foreknowing and predestination and all that. Remember that all before the earth began, he had already chosen you. Yes, you. Yes, me. And so because we've been chosen, he gives us revelation. And we thank God for the revelation he's given you and I. And if there's no revelation, we're praying for it. That God give me revelation. Because if there's no revelation, you cast off restraint. And to cast off restraint, we did this some time ago, means that you live anyhow. There's no structure to you. You just get up anyhow and, and just float about like you're some atom. But that's not God, how God has made you. And oftentimes you hear me say that God never um, does anything without purpose in mind. And neither does he create us with any, you know, just, oh, I don't know, I've just created Dorothy. What shall I do with her? But for even before I was in my mother's womb and you were in your mother's womb, that's what he says. He set you apart to be a prophet to the nation. So today we're going to pray concerning that. Number two, so when we start praying, well, I'll remind you in the prayer, but we know what we're praying about. No excuses is number two. That when God has actually come to us and we've actually received that revelation, remember, and we did speak about that, there is a tendency, and I did say that it wasn't just Jeremiah, that when he said, oh, remember, like, I, 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 but I'm young. He says, do, and God says, do not say I am young. Remember, we, we touched on Isaiah, woe to me. You know, like, I, can't, I can't preach. We spoke about Moses. When Moses was called, he was like, I don't know how to speak. I I stammer, blah, blah, blah. If you look through scripture, many people, many people gave excuses. The only person who did not was our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. But remember, we ought to take after him. And when Jesus was called, in fact, the Bible says that where there was a sound in heaven and all of that, and then the trumpet sounded and there was an announcement, God said, look, I'm looking for somebody to go and uh, deliver the whole earth. The Bible said all the angels and heaven was silent. It seems to me that heaven is never silent. Amen. Some of us, we think that God has to be, you know, we have to worship God silently. But actually in heaven, where's the ultimate worship? It's actually not silent. The reason being that the elders worship 24-7. The trumpets are blown and all that. And if the, if the heavens were silent, they wouldn't have made the comment that it became silent. Oh, hallelujah. Shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Shouts of joy and victory shall resound in the tents of the joy. Oh, come on. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. I was setting us up to give a little shout. Because it is important that we worship in in shout and all of that. But at that time, well, the the heavens went silent because everybody realized, well, this is a problem because I I don't qualify. But God, the Bible says, then Jesus says, here I am. I'm ready. You just send me. And that's why he's the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. And he came willingly. That's why he says, I am in charge of my life. That's what he told them. I put it down and I pick it up. Because I come on my own terms. I gave myself before I gave myself. And so we're going to pray that God, not just for the now, but into the future as long as we live. Because when God calls us, remember I said it here because I got it from um, a pastor that came to preach years ago. He said, God gives us the headline but not the small print. And so because we, we don't have the small print, it means that day by day it unfolds to us. So you might know that, you know, I don't know, you've been called as a prophet. But you don't know that it means that today you have to go to FCI and do morning service. Tomorrow you may have to go to Timbuktu. The day after you may have to go to L.A. Or you may have to, you know, sleep on, uh, on, the, on the floor. Or you may have to sleep in a five-star hotel. I know, I hear you. When it gets so far, I can see your eyes glint. But what it means to say is that that day by day. So a day when God says, all right. My daughter Kay, it's time to go to Timbuktu. No excuses. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Because even though up to now it's okay, it's been all right because it's fine, everything is rolling. But maybe tomorrow God might ask you because you're going deeper, you're going higher, you're, the, the call is unfolding, the nitty gritty is coming. So the tendency is that we may have an excuse. 
And so we're praying for ourselves. We're praying for our children, the generations yet unborn, those beautiful ones that are not yet born. We're praying into our future. We're praying for ourselves that God, at any stage in my life, let me not have excuses. Let me train myself. Don't we love Genesis, Genesis chapter 12? When we love to, I love that scripture. But every time when I read it, I quote it, I still feel very challenged. Because the Bible said, and God called Abraham and says, go to the place where I will show you. Where? Do I, do I set my tom-tom? Do I just go round and round and round about the garden? Where am I going? The natural thing was to say, God, where am I going? Can I please go to Timbuktu? Or can I please go to L.A.? Can I go to Hawaii? Can I, you know, if we were to ask all of us, where do you want to go? The list might be different depending on what we enjoy. But he never asked. He just got up and persuaded his wife somehow and said, let's go. Where are we going? I don't know. Let's go. No excuse. He didn't say anything. But I don't know where I'm going. He didn't say, how am I going to take care of my family? How am I going to tell this person? He didn't ask anything. And that's the unction we're praying for ourselves. We're praying for, you're praying for your individual self. You're praying for your pastor. It's very important. You're praying for your super, you're praying for your children. You're praying for the kingdom at large. Because we have to, this world has to be taken. And we ought to not have excuses. Because knowing and understanding that anytime God calls us, he's already equipped us. Remember, we spoke about it, glorify, justify. Third thing we're going to pray into is to be fearless. Amen. We sh- if there's anything you want to pray for all the time, it's that. Because anytime God calls us, because it's, it's the headline, we think, oh my goodness, I can never do that. Yeah? Because where you are and where God is taking you, there's a big gulf. So when you look at yourself and God is saying, you're, you're, no, 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 no. I don't think that's me. How many of us has received, have received a prophecy or something you think it is, oh, I think that person is talking, it's not me he's talking about. It, it, it is not me. Because you can't see yourself. I always remember once when um, um, Apostle Vivian, the first ever time I met him, the kind of prophecy the man gave me, I was thinking, where is this man? Like, is he from outer space? I had no clue what he was saying because I, I couldn't see myself there. I didn't know anything about this. And this man, you know, he's a master prophet. Those of you who know him. I mean, the guy prophesied uh, like concerning my, my birth, the circumstances concerning my birth. And then he started from there. And then when I was, and I, was, I was a child and I was looking at him like, what is he talking about? And then after he did that, he got from back to here. Then he went into the future. So by the time he got to the future, I'm like, this man doesn't know what he's talking about can identify myself anywhere in it. So I'm thinking, what was he talking about? The interesting thing about it was that the, then my mother was there. So I turned to look at my mom and I noticed that my mother was crying. And I thought to myself, well, see, there must be something. And when I investigated, I realized that, oh my goodness. But then, the thing that he was talking about, for me at that time, I have no clue. I can't see myself in it. So what, what happens is fear sets in. You get terrified. That's why he said, do not be terrified of them. Because what I'm telling you, I'm calling you to nations and kingdoms. And here's Jeremiah, just a Jeremiah, a young boy. And he's thinking, what are you talking to me about? Nations, kingdoms. I don't even know the king. I don't, you know. How can I be going to nations? Whatever God has called you to do, find yourself in it. We're going to pray. Please rise with me because time is going. And he talks to him about nations and kingdoms. And we're going to pray, fourthly, for the United Kingdom. We're going to pray for nations and kingdoms. You'd have to be a stranger. Is it Jesus that had an encounter with the, uh, the men is it, um, uh, going to emerge? And he said, well, are, you, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Do you not know what's going on? Haven't you, haven't you heard that Jesus has been resurrected and crucified? You'd have to be a stranger from outer space to not know about Brexit. I'm sure you're six months old. If you say to your six month old, Do you Brexit? They say, Yes, mommy, I know Brexit. We may not understand it, but we've heard it. We know of it. 
Brexit is going on. We don't know who's going to be prime minister. Should I go or should I stay? If I go, I'll be troubled. We don't know. We don't even have a choice. But we are believers. We have a choice. Let's exercise our vote. You exercise your vote in prayer. You may not be a conservative, signed person, but you know what? You are a child of God. And so we ought to stand and pray for the nation and pray that God let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here in this nation and on this earth and in my life. So this is what we're praying about. Number one, we're praying that we're knowing and understanding that we're special and, and all of that. Remember that we're thanking him for the revelation that we will not cast off that restraint. We're praying, God help me, that whenever you call, I'm now, now going to come and describe myself like God doesn't know. God knew that Moses was a stammer, but still, because sometimes we think he doesn't know that. But still, God knew that Jeremiah was young. Still, he's calling. God knows that you're young. He knows you're a woman. He knows that you don't have money. He knows the family you come from. Our mission is raising overcomers, setting the captives free. Freedom Center International is here to support you in every step that you take with the word of God as you seek spiritual and emotional wholeness. And we hope you've been blessed by today's message. Worship with us at 38 Upper Wickham Lane, Welling, Kent, DA16 3HF or give us a call on 0207 277 You can also visit us online at fcichapel.org And remember, there is progress in freedom.